Good Monday morning, taking a live look right now at Elitch Gardens. That would be a nice place to be today. It's going to be warm, but cloudy. Some changes this week. Chris has the details in just a second. Thanks for joining us. I'm Corey Rose here with Jordan Chavez, Keely Chalmers, and Chris Bianchi. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Okay. <laughs> we had snow and cold, you know, Friday and Saturday. Yesterday, you would have never known that even happened. Yeah. It, this is like the Elitch Gardens of weather right now. Truly. Um, this is just this kind of yeah. topsy-turvy little thing, and we're going to keep that uh, going over the next few days. Just an early heads up, by the way. Um, it is Monday, so that means we're obviously thinking about next weekend already. And if you are... Um, it looks pretty wet and pretty stormy for next weekend. So yeah, I know, I know. Just want to get that in the picture just because I've been looking at some of the latest data and it just looks really stormy for next weekend. In the meantime, today it's warmer. Uh, isolated showers for tomorrow afternoon. Better chance for showers tomorrow afternoon compared to today. Slight chance for a shower today, but much better chance for tomorrow. Temperatures right now, 53 for us here in Denver. So it's very mild right now, but the Eastern Plains, uh, very variable temperatures depending on the amount of snowpack and also depending on your elevation and drainage winds. For today, temperatures top out in the mid 70s for us. It is warm, it is breezy as well. Highs today running about 10 to 15 degrees above our seasonal average. We do have a red flag warning, fire danger warning until 8 p.m. for tonight for Southern Colorado. That's where winds are a little bit on the gusty side for us, but uh, also a little gusty for us here into the lower elevations as well the Denver area with winds topping up maybe about 25 miles an hour for us for this afternoon. And uh, Keeley, seven day forecast, we're gonna be near 80 Wednesday and Thursday, but at least no snow to deal with. And that probably means the road's okay right now. I bet drivers are enjoying the dry roads out there this morning. Things looking pretty good. So far, so good. Here's a look at I-25. This is northbound near uh, 58th and uh, traffic pretty smooth. Let's go ahead and take a look at those traffic maps. Lots of green out there this morning. So we'll take a look at some of those travel times right now. Northbound I-225, I-25 to I-70. That'll take you about nine minutes right now. We're looking at 11 minute commute southbound I-225, I-70 to I-25. And if you're headed westbound I-76, E-470 to Commerce City, that'll take you about 11 minutes right now. All right, Keely, thank you. New this morning, a quick resolution to an alert sent overnight. Aurora police say a six-year-old girl was in a Jeep when it was stolen from a gas station at Havana and Iliff. This happened around 9 o'clock last night. An Amber Alert was issued at about an hour or later or so. Shortly after that, police say that they found that girl safe. Police say a suspect is in custody, but they are still investigating what exactly happened. Right now, Highway 50 is closed between Gunnison and Montrose. That means residents in Gunnison County will have to take an all alternative route that is way out of the way for now. Last week, a safety inspection found cracks on the bridge across the Blue Mesa Reservoir at Dillon Pinnacles. The current detour is more than 300 miles long, so crews went to work creating an alternative route that would cut that down. The new detour will use County Road 26, also known as Lake City Cutoff. This is only for local traffic because the road is not built for the kind of traffic US 50 has. It will be open twice a day and 30 minute increments. Crews are working to improve the road in case the bridge needs to stay closed even longer. Today, there will be increased supervision around a Cherry Creek school after police say a man attempted a kidnapping there on Friday. This happened at Black Forest Hills Elementary School near Arapaho Road and Smoky Hills Road. Aurora police say that a man was outside on school property walking up to children and at one point tried to grab a young boy. He left before police arrived, but they were able to find him and arrest him for one count of attempted kidnapping. Police identified him as 33 year old Solomon Galligan, who is a registered sex offender. Opening statements start in just a few hours for the first ever criminal trial trial of a former president. Donald Trump faces charges related to hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. The jury is now seated in this historic case with seven men and five women plus six alternates. Trump says a trial is politically motivated and says he will likely testify during the trial. He faces 34 counts of falsifying business records related to the alleged hush money payment made back in 2016 when Trump first ran for president. Prosecutors call this a matter of election interference. The trial is expected to take up to six weeks. If convicted, Trump could spend four years in prison. This morning, Memphis police are still searching for two suspects in a shooting that killed two people and injured six others. This happened on Saturday night during a block party with up to 300 people in attendance. Police have not determined a motive for this shooting. 
Today, a city in Oregon is taking its challenge of a 2019 circuit court ruling on homelessness to the Supreme Court. That ruling says cities cannot enforce criminal restrictions on public camping unless there is shelter space available. Now the Supreme Court will decide whether to uphold or overturn that ruling. Justices will hear arguments today. If they rule in favor of the plaintiffs, it would make it easier to clear out encampments of those experiencing homelessness, even if no available housing or shelter exists. New this morning, a former Houston Astros prospect has died. Sports Illustrated reports 24 year old Ronnie Garcia and his father were killed in a traffic accident in the Dominican Republic late last week. Garcia was drafted at 16 years old by the Astros before bouncing around to several different teams, including three years with the Detroit Tigers. The pitcher signed with the Revs back in February. At the state capitol over the weekend, the House advanced legislation on a preliminary vote to improve protections for gig workers. The bill would provide greater protections for people who work to deliver food and goods for companies like Uber and DoorDash. It would require greater transparency to show drivers how much money they'll get paid when they take on a gig. A 2022 report by Colorado Jobs with Justice found most gig workers earn about $5.49 per hour after expenses. Denver's minimum wage is $15.00. And 87 cents. However, none of the delivery platforms surveyed had hourly wages higher than $9. The state house also passed legislation requiring gun owners to have liability insurance for their firearms. Bill sponsors said it's to encourage responsible gun ownership. It passed 33 to 29 and now heads to the Senate. If this bill passed, it would require liability insurance that covers losses or damages to a person injured from an accidental or unintentional discharge of a firearm. Today is Earth Day, which is a time to raise awareness about environmental challenges and how to fix them. Sustainability is at the core of this all. And new this morning, Denver Public Schools is sharing some of its efforts. 9 News reporter Courtney Yoon joins us now live from the Glenbrook Greenhouse. Courtney, they've harvested thousands of pounds of food used in their school cafeterias. Yeah, that's right, Jordan. Good morning. This is one of just many projects that Denver Public Schools has for their sustainability efforts. I'm joined with Teresa Hafner with the district. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing very well. I know that this is one of many projects that you guys have. It's all part of your wider climate action plan. It is indeed, but this is such a success. We've already gotten started and we're really proud of it. the efforts we're doing here. Awesome. And so you have some seedlings started over here. Tell me about those. Ah, these are tomato seedlings and snacking pepper seedlings because these will plants will mature in time for the kids when they start the new school year in the fall. Amazing. And like you, you guys have produced thousands of pounds of food for school cafeterias for, across the district. Oh, we have indeed. And that's just so exciting to be able to impact so many kids. But there's over like 24,000 pounds that we've um, grown so far. Oh my gosh, and what kinds of things like tomatoes, peppers? Tomatoes, peppers, but a whole bunch of different varieties of tomatoes. Little tiny cherry tomatoes and Roma tomatoes and slicing tomatoes. So they're really exciting. So how does this all relate back to sustainability efforts? How does this help our environment by having a greenhouse for the district? Oh, great question. So we're not having to outsource as many of the tomato products that we purchase commercially, and they usually come from California. So there's a carbon footprint associated with all of the trucking in of these tomatoes. But by growing them here, the color is vibrant, the quality is excellent, and we've, we've just shortened the carbon footprint for all of us. Yeah, and like this is something unique for a school district to have. Not many school districts, I think, have a, have a greenhouse. I don't think so at this scale. I think we're first in the nation for that. Wow, that's amazing. Well, well, we're going to hear a lot more from you as the morning goes on. Uh, but thank you for being here this morning, Teresa. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Awesome. All right, back to you guys in the studio.